Hi, and welcome to Enigmatic Electronics. This is another installment in our Getting Started series. Today we're going to talk about commercially available soldering equipment. What's good about it, what you need to get started, what you might advance into, and some stuff that might just be fun to play around with later. We've got several different options available to us in commercial soldering irons and guns. And we're going to talk about the most useful first, which are irons. This, you'll use these most of the time in electronics. And we're going to start with the cheapest available and move up to the best on these. And talk kind of what's going on with each, what they're good for. This is going to be about your cheapest option. This is a 30 watt. I got this at Walmart. I think around $5. But I actually wouldn't recommend this. It's a little hard to deal with. It doesn't heat up very good. I did start with this, but take my advice, not a very good one to start with. This is a much better option. This is a Radio Shack version, which Radio Shack's kind of teetering on not being in business. We don't know what they're going to do, but it is a better soldering iron. This is also a 30 watt. Good for circuit boards. You're not going to melt anything or burn it up with 30 watt. Moving up, these are Wellers. It's a name I trust and use daily. This is a 40 watt with a chisel tip. This is better for putting wires together, this chisel tip, than actually doing circuit board work. I have found, though, that these chisel tips work good on desoldering with braid. Same thing, Weller in an 80 watt. A lot of heat here. Probably shouldn't ever touch a circuit board with this because you will melt something. Very good on put, at putting bigger wires together, though. And this is pretty, as the handheld goes, this is moving up the list from good to better. You can also get different tips for these higher wattage guns moving over here you get into the more professional and better equipment also made by weller this is the fine point works real good on circuit boards real professional model here pretty good this is the one i use for almost everything this is the best in my opinion there are some other brands out there that's probably just as good but i trust weller this is adjustable you can adjust your temperature rating here real easy to manipulate lightweight small has the fine tip for circuit boards you notice on these they have a built-in stand sponge this one's even more portable because you can move the stand around this one everything's built in one this is an older unit but really this is your top dog and as soldering irons go, if you're going to spend your money early in electronics, I would say spend it on a soldering iron because this is going to take you uh, really far and you're not going to fumble around and get irritated with bad solder joints and melt stuff. So just spend your money well on these. These do have the stand built in, which is nice. These require an external stand, of course. And I have a few examples here. <clears throat> Most of these soldering irons come with something like this and as you can see I've never used this because these are complete garbage in my opinion it unfolds like this sits on the table you're supposed to prop your iron up notice it's easy to knock over melt stuff never recommend these this is a much better option I got this at a radio shop you can get them from other dealers around catalogs you can get them offline these are nice you got the sponge built in so you can clean your tip. They hold the iron well. They're weighted so you don't knock them over. Real good option and they're not expensive. Or you can go the route. I built this one so I could put multiple irons in it and just kind of have them there to plug in and heat up. This will hold six. Probably not going to need this. It was just something I wanted to make. But if you have a welder and you want to play around with some scrap, it's a good deal. Now we're going to move from electric soldering irons over to something else you might be interested in these are butane powered and i got two versions here these take butane fuel good thing about these is you can carry them in your car you can take them where you don't have electricity if you need to repair something and that's in my opinion the best thing for these is just repair work where you don't have electricity which is going to be most likely your car this is a weller and this is one time that i won't endorse the weller over top of another brand the weller works well but it don't work as good as this this is made by snap on and this belongs to a friend of mine and he gets real good service out of this and in fact this is his primary piece of soldering equipment 
at our job. They do use, they do use fuel. You have to keep refueling them. They are a valid option though if you don't have any power. And you can get other types of soldering irons. There's a couple that I have no experience with, would like to have experience with. There's a new version that is a no heat soldering iron. It's battery powered and you're supposed to not burn yourself with it. There's a tweezer style that actually clips. I don't have experience with either one of those, so I can't tell you, but I'm sure there's good videos on YouTube that explains those. Different kind of solder equipment altogether is the pistol grip. <clears throat> I started with these. In fact, this is the one I started with. You can see the wear and tear. And I think it's hard to remember, but I think this was around an 80 watt. 4080 I think it's got two stages it does dual watt the one good thing about these are they heat up almost instantaneously you pull the trigger they get really hot really quick not very suited for circuit board work but they're good to put wires together and bigger wires so this is a lower wattage this is a 260 and 200 watt gun what I find useful about this is there's this tip that you can actually cut rope and whatnot with some people really like using these for wire versus the iron and really because they heat up quicker they heat up very quick the last thing i want to mention and you won't use these a lot these were used in mostly production work in factories this is a solder pot and you plug it in and it takes about 10 minutes to heat up this whole little pot of lead here becomes molten and if you're doing wiring harnesses where you need to tin the ends or put on ring terminals, you, you have a separate bottle of flux. You dip it, you dip it in, and it's done that quick. This I got off of eBay for about $40, which was actually a good price for this. It's an American-made unit. It was in good condition. But like I said, it, it's, this is kind of a fun thing if you get into it more. You're not going to need this for a long time if you ever need this. It is just kind of fun. And if you're doing a lot of wiring, this can be useful. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. I hope you found this informative and fun. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, visit our YouTube channel. It's Enigmatic Electronics. We also have a Facebook page by the same name. So have fun with electronics, be safe, thank you.